There we go. Look at that. All right, heading out to the shop right now. And I just wanted to catch you guys up on what's been happening with the CNC table. So I haven't really worked on it that much. I uh, put a couple posts out on the internet one on uh, CNC and C's uh, Facebook page, their support page, I guess. I got nothing. I uh, put the similar post on Plasma Spider and also got nothing. So that made me think that I gotta solve this myself. First thing to figure out is why the Arc OK light was coming on when I'd activate. The Y homing switch. So from the support CD that I got with my my CNC kit, there was a application there called uh, Screen Four. It was meant for the Mach Three software, and with that application, you can actually look at what each one of the buttons do. With that application open. I could open up the Blade Runner screen or the Mach 3 software with the Blade Runner screen and actually click on each one of those buttons to see what the command was for that. Pretty simple. So I clicked on the Wyoming switch and it gave me a bunch of data for it. I wrote all that down. I then clicked on the Arc OK light, wrote all that down. It was pretty much the exact same. So those two lights were actually hooked together. So the next step was to figure out what that Arc OK light was supposed to be. And I couldn't really find any information on the internet, so I did the old reboot. Basically uninstalled the Mach 3 software and then reinstalled it. And that seemed to work. The light's working now. That makes me think that today we're going to be cutting some steel. Pretty excited about that. Got our control computer started up. We're going to click on that Blade Runner icon. beeps because we're in reset down here but all right that started flip our power on that starts this up that's all good you hear the motors lock up I'm kind of buzzing right now okay take it out of reset Go to our diagnostic tab. I'm going to set you guys up here. And I'm going to go over and switch the, the Y homing switch. So, it's working. The next thing I got to do is get the actual plasma cutter hooked up to the machine. So I'm using this Hypertherm Power Max 45. Um, it's got a hand torch. So it has a safety feature built into the torch lead and everything itself that if your hand isn't on it, um, it won't actually activate the cutting. So seeing how I'm not going to run with my hand on this machine, I need to figure out how to bypass that little safety feature. So inside this plug, there's two pins that you have to kind of bridge together. And I watched a video, uh, basically they go over, you got to put just a fine piece of wire between those two terminals and you should be fine. So I've done that. Now all we got to do is hook up this PWM module. So I'm fortunate enough to have an older 
uh, PowerMax 45 that has the, the CPC connector already installed. Some of the newer ones I don't think actually has it. So this cable right here is a, a MICO 1 cable, I think is what they call it from CNC and C. It adapts from the CPC connector to the PWM module. And basically this is giving you your arc okay, your arc fire, and this little cable over here is I think your divided voltage. It's already pre-set up for the hypertherms. So pretty much just plug and play. The only thing that I don't have hooked up here yet is I don't have the ethernet cable that runs over to the control, control box. So you got your ethernet cable that's hooked up to your digital height control board on your control panel. So this thing plugs in right here. Just like that. Now all of our all of our connections to our plasma cutter are made. At this point, we can cut some steel. So we got our torch kind of set on that lower left hand corner. That's where our drawing wants it. And we're just gonna cut, cut out a three inch square with four holes in it. You can see right there, I've had a couple failed attempts. And the program run screen will just zero all of our axes. And then we're going to come down here and load G code. So I got my thumb drive selected, come to the CNC folder, and this part 11 tap file is the G code I created. And there it is. So we got the torch in position. We've got it zeroed. The software is ready, other than the fact that we're in reset. Now we're out of reset. <sighs> So now, let's turn this dude on. And apparently I don't have any, oh, that's why. Need to plug it in. See what we got now. Crap. All right, got the plasma cutter hooked up to the table. We got got enough air, maybe a little bit too much, but I'm sure that'll come down once we start using it. Got our torch zeroed on the bottom left-hand corner. And we got our G code lined up. We're out of reset. Should be good to run. Oh, I do need to tighten that torch inside that clamp. Okay, got the torch tightened up. So now all we gotta do is hit run. So we're gonna turn, we're gonna turn torch height control off for now. And we hit run. Oh. Guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to put the ground on the workpiece. Here it is on the ground. Ground is on the ground. There you go. Let's try that again. And run.
There we go. Look at that. Cool. It cuts. Yay! Edge quality isn't the greatest. Dang it. It's a square with four holes in it. There you go, guys. It's making parts. Took me eight years to do this. <clears throat> All right. So there you guys go. It's working. It's working. Super excited about this. Like, it's just kind of... This has been on my mind for like a long time. A lot of money invested in this thing and it was just sitting around doing nothing. But now it's cutting. So things to do until it's like 100% done is I got to make the little stops right here. I gotta make those out of aluminum. Actually, I started making, making it. It's just an inch and a half wide and aluminum piece with a 60 degree angle on it. That's, that's going to work down here at uh, the zero point on the Y axis. But on the other end, we're going to have issues. I can't really make it that way because in order to use the whole depth of the machine or the full length of the machine, this piece is going to have to be really, really small and have that 60 degree wedge on it. So the switch can just kind of roll up to it and click. Uh, but those aren't really needed. Uh, honestly, these little motors will actually torque out before they actually break anything. So you don't really need those. The one that I do think I, I need to work on is this x-axis homing switch because that would be nice to be able to you know run the y-axis down and then run the x-axis down and that would actually zero the machine um so i might just put one here and uh see how that works out and punt on the uh, limit switches for now and then also the Probably the biggest job is going to be actually putting a water table in here. And probably before that, I want to put some uh, slats in here to kind of, you know, keep them, get rid of cutting on these angled, this angle iron, because it's not the straightest thing in the world. But it's uh, working. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.